So what are we doing today? So today we're going to show you our top 10 favorite boating accessories. So these accessories, you know, they're um, must-haves, probably not, not must-haves, no, no. but you know, probably ones that'll make the boating experience a lot better than it would be without them. What do you think cost-wise? Um, you know, some things are $20 items, some things might be $100 items, right? It's Okay, so maybe $200. Yeah, maybe. Relatively yeah. inexpensive items, yeah. but they are, they are items that we've determined that really have improved our experience here on the water and um, if, we had to, if we had to do it again, we'd still buy them again. And some of them are the smallest things that make the huge difference. Let's move on to number 10. So number 10 on our list is a sunshade. Yeah, so this is the sunshade right here. And uh, so it's made, um, it's made from a material, I think it's like a PVC material called uh, Perfilex or something, something like that. It has some Keter strips at the top here, which fit into the awning rail strips. And it's, uh, you know, it blocks out most, uh, a good chunk of the light here. Mainly in the summertime, you end up with uh, inevitably uh, at certain points of the day, uh, especially late in the day on hot days where you, you just want to get out of a little bit of that sun. And having that where you can put it where you need it really, really helps. Now, with our curtains um, on the enclosure around the whole perimeter of the back, we have the awning rail strips mounted just underneath the edge of the roof here. Depending on which way the sun's coming from, we can actually just slide that in and position it at any position um, around the entire back of the boat. Or as much as we think we want lots of sun, sometimes you do need a little bit of shade. Yeah. So even if we're at anchor and we're just swinging on the hook, uh, if we don't have our stern line out, the sunshade is really handy because then, like Matt said, we can actually move it from the different sides around the aft roof here and block out the sun, which is really nice. The one added benefit we get is uh, we're able to project from a, a, a small little video projector and we're able to project a movie on there. So on a you know nice hot summer evening, sit out on the back deck here and watch our favorite movie. And that wraps up our number 10. So our number nine pick is Loctite containers. And what we like about them is, um, well, they lock tight. You put your things in, they lock tight. Um, so when you have these things in the fridge, you're in rough seas, they tip over. You don't have to be worried about things leaking. Like if you just put uh, something in a bowl with some saran wrap over in the fridge, of course, you're gonna have a huge mess to deal with. What's nice about these, uh, it was a package I got from, I think it was Walmart, and it comes with uh, three round ones, and then it has, um, there's kind of three kind of rectangle ones. So they can stack within each other as well. So that way, uh, for storage, you're not taking up a whole lot of space. So this one here has, um, there's three containers all together in this one. And then we have three of the rectangle ones. And I didn't think that they would be as good as what I've discovered them to be. I actually, um, I mean, this is all I pretty much use all the time now on the boat. It's a good price for one of our top accessories. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so our number eight pick is these guys right here that hold the paddles and we have pipe pole as well up here. So we use these for holding mostly paddles up there and um, you know with having well there's three paddles uh, um, you know two kayak and one paddleboard you know with that that much stuff plus a pipe pole or two that really adds up and there's, it's a lot of volume so um, having somewhere to store this stuff and not just you know, laying it around or leaning it up against something, it does really help. Now these, um, these I actually bought at Canadian Tire and they're just in the garage section. Um, so one of the nice things about these is there's no metal on them. Um, they're kind of a cam lock sort of rubber piece that you basically just push it in and then it just locks into place. And, um, and I just more mounted them on a 90 degree angle so they're not pointing right down. And uh, 
they work really, really good. I put them on there probably about five years ago and uh, haven't had an issue and they really just, you know, clean up the whole space, keep it, keep it really organized and just lock right in, you know. And I think they're designed for, for like, for at home use, for like brooms or, or yeah. you know, shovels, those kind of things. Yeah, so that wraps up our number eight pick. So number seven on our list is West Marine Velcro straps. Yeah, so we're just talking about, um, you know, these kind of Velcro straps here. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if you've been to West Marine at all before, you've probably seen them. A few things about these, you use them so many places all over the boat. You know, you may use them for, you know, put some lines like that, pretty obvious ones. Uh, power cables along the dock and then attaching to, to the stanchions. Uh, so you don't, um, you know, drop them in the water. Um, one of the other places that's really good is you can actually screw them like in, in like a lazarette or engine room or something where you want to like coil up a hose or something like that and hang it. Um, there's one place on the back of our wet bar where I do that. Um, and I just have it screwed in here with a nice big washer. And then I just roll up the, you know, the clean water fill hose and I'll put that in there and then just wrap the straps around so it just, uh, you know, the strap just stays permanently there. In Canada, West Marine left about 10 years ago. We used to, we used to have West Marines here and every time I went to the store, I'd usually just grab a handful of these and, you know, whether I was buying something or not. So I ended up with quite a few of them, but they really do last a long time. Like, you know, probably most of these, like this one obviously was in the weather quite a bit, pretty, pretty faded. And, uh, but you know, a lot of these things, they're going on Probably. I would say close to 20 years we've probably had some of Well, these. yeah, 15, <laughs> yeah, at least yeah. 15 years or something like that. So um, they, they do have really good UV stabilization. I think because the advertising that's on there probably is why they go. They were so cheap. I remember they used to be, I think, 99 cents each or something like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just, however many you get in a handful and throw that in the basket. And anyway, if you go to West Marine, you can buy these things non-West Marine and they'll probably cost you a bunch more. But if they say West Marine on them, they, they're, uh, they're probably the best value and use them everywhere. Yeah, good investment. Yeah. So. so our number six favorite boating accessory is these right here. So these are the kayak holders or you can put paddle boards in them or they'll actually hold two paddle boards. They really make sure you keep the stuff off the deck. Um, now these ones are made by Magma not sponsored or anything, but uh, you know, there's a number of companies who make them, but the um, the Magma ones, what's really nice is they have these, uh, these knobs here that you can loosen them off and then you just tighten them up and they require no tools. So these can just be loosened off like this and then you tilt it so you get the right width in here for your kayak or paddleboard and then you just tighten these back up. and then they're nice and solid. And then if you remove it, just like they are now, you just loosen these off. And then just tighten them back up. And then they stay there. And they're back out of the way again. They really do help the boat um, stay uncluttered and you don't have kayaks or paddle boards blocking your walkways or anything like that. So anyway, might be something to pick up if you have that issue. So probably the only thing I don't like about these Magma ones, other than they are a little expensive because I think they're probably up, a, you know, they're probably over $200, unfortunately, maybe even closer to three, but you'll notice that there is a little bit of uh, rust on these. I find they do have to clean these every once in a while. I've maybe only cleaned these ones once in quite a few years, but they are made of 304 stainless, not 316. So you can always tell the difference on how nice 316 stays and 304 how it does actually get a little bit of discoloration that will clean up very easily but come on magma you should have maybe made those out of 316 and just turn. our number five favorite accessory is this light right here so this was just off i think i got off ebay shortly after we got the boat and our last boat we had a, um, a couple of uh, led floods sim similar to this and um, now, the real value in this is, especially if you're leaving the dock early or for some reason you end up coming in late, it's so difficult to see stuff on the water. And the water is in, th in this area, so many logs, or it could be, you know, deadheads or ropes or- Crab traps. Yeah, the crab traps are probably some of the worst. And the fact that there's nothing that really 
says what they use for a float or what color that float is. But in any case, when you turn this on, it just makes everything on the water stand out. Now, it's not quite the same as like, you know, the uh, infrared flur type stuff, but it really does bring everything out on the surface quite well. And being at the furthest point here, you don't get any flashback or anything like that. So it really makes a difference and that sort of comes down to a safety thing. I think originally I paid about $25 for this light assembly. And in fact, mounting it costs more, the wiring costs more, the switches cost more. The installation actually, for so many reasons, costs more to actually put it in, not to mention the time. But the light itself is, almost cost free uh, considering and uh, but it really it does make a difference so the original light um, this one's controlled by a little joystick up top and by comparison you can have this thing on and you can pan it around all you want and you can't even tell it's on you turn this one on and everything is visible so certainly a worthy accessory on any boat you know if you get stuck one way or the other in the dark you'll really be glad you had it our number four pick our number four pick is instant hot water. Well, this actually might sound like kind of a, a luxury <laughs> and uh, a non-essential and really something that doesn't need to be there. There is actually some good reasons for it. On our boat, we spend a lot of time at anchor. We also usually keep the hot water tank heated, especially in winter with the uh, with our SPAR furnace. But especially when we're, we don't spend a lot of time at docks for fill up, we'll fill up our water and then we have to make it last, especially on our longer trips. So we are usually trying to conserve water. Heating it isn't really the issue. But when we want to have like a shower or something like that, then you're stuck actually turning on the water. You're kind of waiting for the hot water because you know we're not going to get in a cold water shower. So either you're catching it with a pot and you're using it later to make some coffee or tea with or to cook with or something like that, or you're just letting it go down the drain and it's gone. With the instant hot water, I have one of these little remotes and you sometimes use them for Christmas lights or you know on the Christmas tree or whatever it's just a remote switch that you use and um, so you click on on the fob here and um, you know basically just turns the it's just hooked up to the pump so you can get one of those watts pumps for around a hundred dollars or so I think at Home Depot they're made for the domestic market and you basically just intercept the uh, hot water right from the hot water tank with that pump hook it up to a, an inverter power and then there's a little a little uh, thermostatic bridge you put just you know at the last uh, you, well, you could put it near the shower in this case or we put it at the sink here because that's the last appliance in it and then basically when you turn on that pump if the water's cold it circulates back in through the cold water and back to the hot water tank and then as soon as it gets warm there the thermostatic valve closes so it stops circulating and then it just opens as it starts to cool and keeps hot water at basically every every tap throughout the boat. Now we only turn that on when we really need it or if we're at the dock and we have the hot water tank just turned on, then it's an ultimate convenience because okay. you get hot water at every single tap instantly. Mm -hmm. um, but the true spirit behind that besides that incredibly nice convenience is the, uh, is the uh, aspect of saving the water, um, mainly for having a shower in the morning, which yeah. it may or may <laughs> not be uh, a necessary thing, but. Yeah. We like having a shower in the morning as yeah. long as we have the water for it. It's not yeah. the most inexpensive uh, small convenience, but it's not too expensive and it's an easy thing to add into the boat. Mm -hmm. So so that goes down as our number four. So number three is a can crusher, which is this little gadget right here. Uh, we got this off Amazon. What did we pay for it? Oh, I think they go for, I don't know, $10, $15 or yeah, something. Yeah, it wasn't too, too expensive. What's really nice about that is before the can crusher, you know, we were, well, we weren't obviously crushing the cans. We would end up with garbage bags full of empty pop cans, beer cans. And that takes up a lot of space, especially when you're on a big trip and trying to find storage on your boat to put these things. So we got this can crusher. And what's really nice is what we do anyways, is we give it a little uh, dent in there first, put it in there and pull it down and voila, it's crushed right down. That reduces our recycling garbage stuff um, quite a bit. We used to do this by hand, but it, sometimes you kind of 
cut your hand a bit and stuff. So this is much easier and sometimes a job for the kids. They, we just say, okay, go crush the cans and they'll go do it. So also uh, one thing that's good with crushing cans is for our style of boating, we do a lot of cruising where we might not be at a marina where we can get rid of the cans. And so trying to reduce its volume and that's really what this is about. Yeah, the old way when we weren't crushing them and you would have a garbage bag, I want to say, you know, one big black garbage bag, you know, when we're kind of storing this stuff, waiting till we get somewhere where we can get rid of this, these kind of recyclables. It's nice if it's a smaller amount and then it's, we're not, you know, moving stuff around all the time trying to find somewhere to store stuff. So number two on our list is the water pressure accumulator. So that's a little bit of a technical item, um, not too technical, but essentially it is an air tank with like an air bladder that pushes against the water pressure in the domestic water system. So if you're not familiar with it, how it kind of works is when you turn on the pump for the pressurized water for all your faucets, you'll hear that pump run up and then it'll stop. And then when you turn on the water, you'll hear that pump start to run again and it'll cycle. And then as soon as you turn it off, it'll go up. Now what you sometimes encounter, well, what you'll pretty much always encounter is if you're just putting the water on a little bit, you'll hear the pump come on and then off, on and off. And it's actually not good for it. It's, it kind of bypasses uh, through the bypass valve on that, and it actually shortens the life of it. And it's very inconvenient. And sometimes the water almost stops going, then it comes on again once the pump comes on. And it's just not, um, it doesn't work as good as it can work. The water pressure accumulator, when you add that in, you pressurize it with air pressure. And then when you turn the water on a little bit, you won't hear the pump come on right away because it's using the air pressure to level out and control that constant pressure, water pressure out of your faucets. And then after it's been on for maybe a second, half a second or you know, however, once the pressure drops to its threshold, then the pump will come back on, but the pump will run more constantly and then go off. It won't be on, off, on, off, on, off. A lot of boats don't come with water pressure accumulators on the water system. And you know, I don't think they're that expensive. I think they're they're probably about a hundred dollar item. They really um, improve the experience of using any of the water systems on board. They also extend the life of the water pressure pump that pushes the water through that system. We added one in shortly after we got this boat and it mm -hmm. really made a difference. Uh, you're using the water every time you're on the boat. So yeah. it's one of those things you get mm -hmm. lots of use of. So, so that is our number two pick. So number one on our list is a water purifying system. Yeah, so when we got the boat, it actually had this system and we've we had to replace it because the actual tap broke. Um, I don't know, I think it was about two or, two or three years ago or something like that. Um, but the rest of the system was still the same and we actually we actually bought a, another whole kit uh, just to buy the you know the special sort of tap that it comes with. And you know, we got another filter and other pressure housing for it and stuff like that. Um, the one that we use is, it, it's kind of like this. It's the, uh, what is it, what brand is it? I think yeah, it's Rain Fresh. Rain Fresh. And um, we're in Canada. We just got it at the sort of store Canadian Tire but I imagine most hardware stores or whatever would sell this and it's mainly made for the domestic market anyway but um, it uses a ceramic filter like this inside and the, sil the filter is completely serviceable and you basically take it, it comes with a piece of crocus cloth and you and you just sort of every once in a while you pull this out of the pressure housing and you just give it a little bit of a almost like it's almost like sandpaper and it you just clean the surface off and then you just rinse it and then just let it dry out and then it's ready for another go we have a few of these extra filters so we swap them in and out um, every so often and then you basically there's a gauge that you measure the diameter and if the diameter gets too thin that's when you discard it but even the one, we still have the one when we bought the boat mm -hmm. and it still isn't actually too thin. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a charcoal core in it and they encourage you, I think, to replace these annually um, because that active charcoal, I think, ends up um, wearing out or doesn't function the way it should anymore or something like that. But a few good things about this. This, um, this filter filters out five nines, like 99.999% of uh, organic uh, harmful bacteria. Actually, it's 99.999, so five, five nines behind <laughs> the decimal point. You know, so coliform, salmonella, typhoid, um, you know, all those sort of nasties. It will actually take those right out of the water. So if you ever did any water contamination in your tank, this will actually take it. It's a little slow to fill a, fill a cup or something like that because it's literally pushing it through this, um, this ceramic filter. 
but it takes everything out and and that's huge you know that's keeping your water um, you know very safe to drink and also you know we don't notice any taste or anything like that in the water the water tastes perfect and right? by having this it saves us from buying um, cases of bottled water cannot stand the plastic bottles they're just you know you end up with just stacks of them the last well, thing you, we need <laughs> you think about like because our old boat we didn't have this system so we were buying bottles of water on our old boat and you know, if each of us are drinking so many a day, you know, that's, it's a, it's a lot, right? So it's a lot to store in the boat when they're full. And then of course, a lot to store in the boat when they're empty. And the large, and that larger global concern is yeah. where do all these plastic bottles really go? Yeah. And, and, you know, and then there's other things like, you know, if your water sits in those plastic bottles for a long time, is there anything kind of leaching into them, especially if you leave those plastic bottles in the sun in that water for a while? You, mm -hmm. you know, the, not having plastic bottles is a win. And just having this system where we fill the tank and we drink the water from the tank and it tastes as good as any plastic bottle water, yeah. it's uh, it's huge. And it certainly w is probably the thing we use the most every time we come on the boat is drinking the water. You know, we're comfortable with drinking the water as yep. well, right? We're not. Uh not drinking water because we're not sure it's easy to install it's just a little tap that's off to the side and um you just tap into your existing water under under the sink and the, the kit comes with i think everything you need to do it mm. i think it was a hundred or maybe a little over like 129 dollars canadian so mm. like 25 dollars us <laughs> 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 anyway um we really really recommend this as uh, as something um something yeah. to add onto your boat yeah so that wraps up our favorite top 10 boating accessories so we hope you've enjoyed them if you have other uh, accessories that you really like um, please feel free to comment below and let us know so we can check them out yeah please do i'm sure there's uh, lots of things that we haven't done that we could probably still discover and make our life a little better and and hopefully these things will, might make your life a little bit better yeah. anyway thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time Thanks.